So today, welcome to Bob and Tam Show. Today we got Jamie from Speeds Performance Plus. They've been in business for over 26 years. They actually have a shop out in Rapid City too. How long yes. has that been there? Yep. Uh, Long time. Has it been longer than the truck? It has not. Okay. Uh, well, technically we had a shop in Watertown, South Dakota, back when my dad was around. And then uh, we closed that, did the mobile rig for a while, and then my brother Jason started a shop out in Blackhawk, which is right by Rapid. And then he's been running that ever since. So, and then I run the mobile rig, so. Okay. So today we're gonna talk about slip-ons. Yep. Uh, mufflers that you put on your bike. There's a lot of varieties out here. We can talk about performance ones. We can talk about maybe better for sounds. We can talk about some that are just junk that you shouldn't invest your money in. And uh, remember, we're not sponsoring it. Nobody's sponsoring us. And uh, it's once again, it's your opinion. Correct. So if somebody gets butt hurt, it won't be the end of the world. This is true. And, uh, so, but we, I go off of you because of the, the 26 years you've been doing this. Yep. You know, you've done thousands and thousands and thousands of bikes. A lot of bikes. You know, yeah. and when I, somebody was just asking that question the other day, why do I have somebody work on my bike at a rally? Mm -hmm. And it's, that's the main reason I say, because you see so much more stuff to where a shop might see one problem that you have every other day. Correct. With a bike, yep. where they might see it and might struggle with it for weeks, where you have to fix it in a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. I think the just the volume that you get to do on the road. Um, for example, like at Daytona, we did 34 cam jobs, uh, mostly M8s, the newer bikes. There's a lot of shops that probably were lucky to do that the entire year, you know. So we do a lot of volume, and with us on the road, it has to be done the same day for the most part, unless you're doing a motor or something like that. So it's in and out, in and out, you know, get it done. That's the volume. And But we've been doing it a long time, so we've kind of got the science down of what's the most efficient, quickest way to do it, but yet still have your quality top notch. And so I think that's, that's just kind of the system we've been using. So. Well, I also see we had a customer this week that was one of our subscribers that actually had his bike built by a Harley dealer and they didn't have a dyno, so all they could do was map it to where you had to bring it here to get it to where it was running yeah. right. We do a lot of that and then I do a lot of tunes for other companies where they'll sell maps over the phone and stuff like that and then the bikes don't run right and so then they end up bringing it to us and then there's nothing like putting it on the dyno and actually building a custom map for that bike that day whatever because you're building it all to everything the equipment is reading and adjusting and then after that you can let the other part of the bike the o2 sensors your other sensors take over read the information and make the adjustments that it needs to make we'll oh. get back to that yep uh, i know if, if i was going to make a performance bike i'm going to take my bike i'm going to put a 131 engine on it and i want it to get the best power i can get out of it well, the first thing I would do is recommend putting a two into one on it. That's going to be the best of the best. Any exhaust you could put on any Harley Davidson, just because of the way the collector is, it creates a vacuum that sucks the other exhaust out the other cylinder and then kicks it out the bottom end. And then it's got enough back pressure in the muffler. Therefore, you know, you don't lose all that low end torque. You just, you can't beat it. It makes great torque on the bottom and pulls all the way through mid range and top end. After a two into one would be like a true dual system with some kind of chamber to equalize the exhaust up in the front. Because the goal is if you have the front and the rear the same length, you'll have equalized exhaust pressure, it's coming down. That seems to, and if they're stepped, that seems to help um, in creating, you know, again, more power and then having enough back pressure to have torque on the bottom end. Um, we actually did, I did some testing and I put it on my YouTube, my YouTube channel. Uh, we did Chromeworks was the brand that we chose, and we did some testing between like a D and D two into one, a Chromeworks two into one, and like a Chromeworks True Duels. And the interesting thing we found out was like on their True Duels, when we put it on, with just the way you buy it, it had, didn't have enough back pressure, so there was a big dip in the bottom end of the graph, meaning you'd lose a ton of torque. Well, they make what's called an HP insert. We put that inside of the baffle. It did quiet the bike down a little bit but it put like 20 some foot pounds of torque on the bottom end of the bike which is where you ride it that's the goal is right you want all your torque to be down in that 2500 to 4 grand area 3500 that's where you ride but yet still have it pull horsepower through and so we did some testing on that once i put the hp inserts in we got all that torque back but still had our mid-range and our top end and it made for a really good system um, so what happens is a lot of times guys come in with new bikes, like for instance, we'll say a customer will go buy an M8, brand new M8, come in and it's so quiet, right? It sounds like a sewing machine. We want it louder, we can't even hear it run. So the first thing they want to do is put slip-ons on. 
if that's all you're trying to go for is noise and you're, you're not necessarily getting performance because you're going to leave the catalytic converter in the front part of the bike for admissions, then you pretty much can put any muffler you want on the bike. It's not really going to change the performance of the bike. It's just going to change the sound based on how open the muffler is. The more open, obviously, the louder it'll be, the more restricted, the quieter it'll be. Um, so that, you know, really doesn't matter, but where it really comes into intuition is when you start putting a different head pipe on the bike, creating flow in, flow out, then the back pressure matters. I have a lot of customers that come in and they'll decat their head pipe and then they'll want to throw on a wide open set of mufflers or something on the bike. The problem with doing that is you don't get enough back pressure in the bikes and then you create that dip in the bottom end of the graph again, which is all based on exhaust flow. And if you throw a camshaft or something with it, it makes it even worse, especially if it's an aggressive cam. So then they think the tuner should be able to get that out. Well, the problem is, is it's not in the tuning, it's in the design of what you created in that flow of that exhaust. So it's kind of that fine line. If you're gonna open up the front, you gotta have enough back pressure so you can get torque on the bottom end, but yet you want it open enough so you can flow enough through to make power, horsepower at the same time. So when you're looking at slip-ons and things like that, what are some of the top of the ones out there? The best um, ones that you would, like if you would, if somebody yep. came in here now and I said, you know, I got a 131, I built it all up, yep. I want to go to two in the one. What do I? What do you recommend? Uh, the three best exhausts that I have had on my dyno for tuning purposes is Chromeworks, D and D, and Bassani. Those are kind of the three. There are a lot out there: Horsepower, Inc., Sawiki. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of different brands. All of them are are fairly you know pretty good. But I'd say the top three as far as you know making power um, would be that Bassani, D and D, and Chromeworks. And the reason I say those three is because we see a a lot of different types of camshafts, different size of motors. And when you put those three exhausts on, very rarely do I ever see a dip in the bottom end of the graph. It usually, when you nail it on the dyno, it accelerates right away, goes up to peak torque, holds it, and then goes across. Some of the other pipes you run that maybe are a little shorter or maybe have more open uh, baffle system on the bike seem to have a little bit of a sag or a dip in the bottom still accelerate good and pull but the goal is to try to hit it make it accelerate straight up and go all the way across so you have no lag you know no whatever you've always got all your torque right there so those three would kind of be the top three at least as far as the dyno testing that i see um, and then as far as true duels if you go into true duels chromeworks makes a good true duels reinhardt slimline um, we just did one on a 131 that came in uh, we actually bumped the cam up on it and uh, it performed really well made really good power uh, accelerated really good on the bottom end no dip um, it has to be that combination of like i said the chamber in the front stepped and then having enough baffle but not too open so you get that dead spot on the bottom end so but there's there's i mean there's a lot of brands out there that uh you know, it, it gets tougher to make power if you do have cats in the bike, obviously, because it's restrictive. Um, but, you know, s and is seeming to do it with some of their pipes. They're putting what's called their performance cat or whatever they call it. And we've had some of them. We've ran on some of the bikes. And you're still making good power. You don't make as much as you do without the cat, but you still make decent power and you're still meeting emissions. So just kind of a matter of the look, the sound, you know, what the customer's after. I think there's just, unfortunately, there's so much misinformation out there that people just need to do their homework and, you know. Because there's a lot of brands out there. There is. You know, there's, uh, you know, Tabs out there, Cobra's out there. Sh the Shark brand is another new yeah. one people like because it's cheap, whatever. It doesn't perform that great. It's a, che you know, cheaper made quality, but, um, because yeah. I always tell people that, you know, I, I when they ask me, you know, there's all these guys out here, YouTubers will say, well, this is the muffler you need to buy. Well, yeah. unless you know what you want to do with that bike, do you want sound? Do you want a, a nice tone? Do you want performance out of it? Yeah. You know, all that would vary to where one manufacturer may not be able to cover all that. Yeah, exactly. You know, they might be more on the performance side, might be a little louder. It just kind of depends. It's kind of like camshafts are the same way. People come in all the time. Oh, I want a cam in my bike, and then I got to ask them questions. You know, okay, where do you ride? You know, what's your riding style? Are you an aggressive rider? Or are you more of a lugger guy that's you know stays under four grand? Or where do you ride the bike? Well, I want the best numbers that you can get. Well, that's not all about numbers. It's about where do you want the power on the bike when you're riding it. I can do any, I can put big cams and big this and big exhaust and all that and get you big numbers on the dyno, but that doesn't mean on the road it's going to ride great, right? You might not have torque on the bottom end and you're going to hate it. Then you're going to have to rev it really high just to get going anywhere. So kind of just depends on the style of how they ride the bike, where they want the power. And then you, exhaust is a huge, huge factor and you can do that. I mean, we've built motors for guys and they wanted to run their not so good exhaust 
exhaust and I know what the motor does, right? You know, say it's a 124 built motor, should do 150 horse. The guy wants to run the X exhaust and I run it and the bike makes like 105 horse. And he's all mad because the bike isn't making any power. And I'm like, well, if you allow me to change the exhaust to this Chromeworks or D&D or whatever it is, I can get the power I normally get out of it. Well, guess what? We just change the exhaust, boom, 150 horse. It makes all the power, you know, it just, I think there's, like you said, there's a lot of misinformation people just don't understand. That's why they come to people like us because we've done hours and hours and hours of testing and that's why I have my demo bike to try different cams, try different pipes, just like these other companies and test this and test that and see what works in the real world and then that's how I come up with my packages that, hey, you know, this combination really work together so that's what I start selling. Well, I think that's a big difference between you and a lot of these guys that are out here. A lot of these other guys are just selling a product. They're pushing that and that's all they do to where you do spend the time and the money to figure yeah. out what, what I don't, is the best. I don't sell a product and I, my dad started this back in 98. We will not sell a product or put it on my trailer or my shop or anything unless it actually works or does what it says. A great example is that is Chromeworks came to me and wanted me to sell their exhaust and I hadn't really, you know, this is a few years back when they kind of first came out. I didn't really know a lot about Chromeworks. So I actually told uh, Chris at the time, I said, well, if you want to give me one of your pipes, I'll do some testing on my demo bike. And if it does what you, says it, you say it does, then I'll start selling it, carrying it. And he actually did. And I put it on my demo bike. That was the test we did with the D&D &D and all of that. And I was like, wow, it, it's like right there. I mean, it performed really, really well. Um, the quality of the finish was really good. And I was like, yeah, so I'm going to start carrying these exhausts. They really work. They work well. Their true duels work really well. And so that's how we came across that product line. Kind of the same with like Rockford Phosgate stereos. Again, you know, we looked at all the different things we wanted to carry, you know, sampled this, sampled that. And I was like, well, I really liked what Rockford was doing because it's, you know, rideable, rideable music. You can hear it. Might not be the loudest in the parking lot, but when you're driving down the road at 80 mile an hour, you can actually hear it. It's clear. You can hear the mids and the highs. Well, that's what I want for my riders. You know, we're not, we're not entering music competitions. We want to be able to hear it when we're driving down the road. And so that's why we chose to sell that product. And it goes the same for, you know, all the other products, S&S and &S and the other ones that we use, you know, it's based on history and experience of what I've had. And if we have a bad experience or it doesn't do what I want it to do, then luckily I have the right to, I don't want to sell that product. I'll sell this instead. So that's kind of how we do it. All righty. I want to thank you for this session and uh, thank Jamie and for the time he's putting out here and uh, we'll talk to you again. All right. Sounds good.